dusty old chronicle I uncovered in my researches. Listen to this, and carefully, for it's a tangled old tale. The Chronicle of Jan Bonder, unknown son of Sir Hugh Bonder, a noble knight, who escaped the slaughter of the armies of his father, Sir Edgar Bonder, lord and landowner, by the hated Norman Baron Fitz Erse. She danced along the crescent moon on high, kept watch and shed a silver song of mine and sang the tea. Her gestures were of holy shape, her smile of saintliness. Her red gold hair let down to drape her form in She swayed, and as her body bent, she poised, now high, now low. As piety and fervor spent, her passion's fiery glow. Her soul was loosed upon a quest of ancient tragic words. She proffered all her skill and sense to bring a thought to birth. She came devoid of wealth and caste to dance beneath a tree. Shunned by the world, a lone outcast, a happy witch. So, for the first time, I was forced to accept Morven for what she was, not as I would make her or wish her to be. And into the beating sound of drums, she drew me. I hereby consecrate thee, O creature of Mars and of iron, our speaking spirit. By fire and water I consecrate thee. 
about him and he is he in thought, in feeling, and in sight. As I bind me, I bind him. As I loose ye, I loose him. I consecrate thee for the special purpose of bringing victory to Jan Bonda, vengeance to Fitzurse, and to regain the castles and lands stolen by Fitzurse from his grandsire, Sir Edgar Bonda. Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Spirit, come. Come to the aid of Jan Bonder that he may attain to his desires. What seek you? I would be gone. I conjure thee to tell me truth. How may my man Jan Bonder here attain his desires? How may I answer your questions when thine own man knows not what he truly desires? I stood as in a tree. I spoke my two desires. First, do the will of God, second, to regain my grandsire's land and fortune and following, filched from him by Baron Fitzurus, and to re-establish my family. Even as I said this, another word came to my mind, and its name came to my lips. I wanted more of it. So, as lord and lady, priest and priestess, warrior and witch, we faced Fitzurus himself as he rode to the gate to recapture his own castle. We had set fires in the courtyard and the keep to spread the news. And in between the rising of the smoke and the singing of the men, we had left one door unguarded, and it was here that Fitzurus and his men, his own son in the lead, launched their assault. Thor was confident a handful of men could hold the door, while a volley of arrows rained down on the invaders and left them spread out on the ground. There in the midst of them, the silence of the fallen, Morven sat, sobbing her heart out, holding bleeding body of Thor, struck with so many sword wounds, not even her healing arts could save him. Well, well, you know, when I dusted off this old chronicle, all I was looking for was information about Brother Stephen Langton. He became Archbishop of Canterbury, it seems, so fast, some say there was witchcraft involved. Here he is, in these very pages, achieving his destiny with high magic's aid. 